And we have been following President Biden's trip to Japan ahead of the G7 summit in Hiroshima. Earlier, the president met with the country's prime minister for a bilateral meeting. Biden will also meet with the rest of the leaders tomorrow. One major focus of the trip is how to counter China's massive military buildup in the Pacific. Japan is already committed to doubling its defense budget, a huge departure from longtime policies imposed after the losses of World War II. So Elizabeth Palmer has more now from Hiroshima. Liz, good morning. Good morning. Japan is America's biggest ally in the Pacific, and it has already started to reinvent its own military to confront the new security threats in this region. Japan's military wants to transform itself into a formidable fighting force. But to get there, it will have to overhaul its pacifist self-image. Japan's constitution was written by American occupation authorities after World War II, and it set out to make sure the country never went to war again. So it actually bans Japan from settling international disputes by force. But China's aggression has changed everything. Last August, it fired five missiles that landed in Japanese waters. And in December, China sailed its aircraft carrier between two of Japan's southern islands. As a result, there's broad support these days for a more muscular military. Naroshiga Michishita is a professor of defense policy in Tokyo. It could have been much more controversial had it not been for uh, China's uh, massive military buildup, its coercive and sometimes even aggressive actions that it's taking uh, in the uh, South China Sea. Japan hosted a defense and security show this spring, which attracted manufacturers of every kind of military equipment, from reconnaissance robots to aircraft. They all have their eye on Japan's plans to double its defense spending by 2027, which will give it the third highest defense budget in the world. Billions will flow to U.S. companies for weapons like Tomahawk missiles and F-35 fighter planes. But all this represents a huge cultural shift. Until now, the Defense Forces, that's the military's official name, have been better known for search and rescue services than combat. Even the latest action-packed recruiting videos aren't convincing young Japanese to enlist in droves. In fact, the most recent drive to sign up 10,000 new service members missed the target by half. Now, here at the G7, another uh, topic that will be headlining the discussions is the war in Ukraine and Vladimir Putin's recent moves to reposition his tactical nuclear weapons. And that, of course, has a, a huge poignancy because we're in Hiroshima, where the U.S. dropped the very first atomic bomb back in 1945 and leveled the city to help end the Second World War. Very good uh, reminder, Liz. Um, so President Biden and Japan's prime minister made some opening remarks before their first meeting. What did they say? Well, uh, the mood was very cordial and warm. Japan's prime minister even said, Joe and I will be coordinating uh, on the G7 agenda, so uh, first names. Um, he said that Japan had unwavering will to uphold what we now know as one of the White House's security mantras, that is, an international order based on the rule of law. For his part, President Biden made a point of thanking the prime minister for hosting the G7 in Hiroshima, which is his hometown. And then he quoted Kishida uh, as saying this is one of the most complex security environments of modern times and that the world would be safer with Japan and the U.S. facing it together. And that means, of course, having a united position on Ukraine and keeping a free and open Pacific. Well, Liz, as you know, uh, military cooperation is just one way to forge bonds and, uh, and build uh, influence. Uh, trade and industry is another way. Uh, the two leaders also spoke about cooperating on emerging technologies. Anything specific? 
Uh, yes, there was. Uh, this is all part of the effort generally to diversify supply chains. One of the U.S.'s largest chip makers, Micron, has just committed to investing billions of dollars to build sem semiconductor plants here in Japan. And Prime Minister Kishida announced a, stick, a tech startup lab innovation uh, joint study center between MIT and the University of Tokyo, which has just got the green light. Um, and so I thought it was really sort of important to sort of reinforce what you said about the location of this of this gathering in Hiroshima. It just so happened that I had been there in April and, and visited the spot um, where the bomb dropped. And there is a not only an intense focus on recognizing all that was lost, but moving forward, an intense focus on in, encouraging um, uh, nations to reconsider um, nuclear weapons. Tell us a little bit more about Japan's anti-war sentiment and, and what will it take to convince young people that perhaps the military may be a good option? Yeah. It's going to be a long process. As you know from your visit, uh, the tragedy of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima has been converted into this powerful message for peace, which is really now part of almost like Japanese DNA. Mm -hmm. And uh, the military is much better known, as I said, for search and rescue and kind of civilian support role than fighting. It's anathema in this country. The military has just increased wages for young recruits. It's probably going to have to do it again because the salary is not good. It's between 1000 and 1500 a month for a new soldier, which is uh, Really, that's under the U.S. poverty line, so uh, not good. Um, and, uh, but as I said, it's really a cultural issue, and it's probably going to take a generation to change. The military will go ahead to purchase its hardware. They're going to invest in training and so on. But to actually have it an institution that commands the kind of respect that the military in the United States does, that's many years away. Yeah. Uh, Liz Palmer, thank you so much.